ahead of eight. Public hearings, notices have been published, posted, and mailed. Tonight we're going to hold a public hearing, waive the first reading, and introduce an ordinance which conditionally terminates the Skycrest Development Agreement and adopt a resolution assigning the Affordable Housing Agreement and Improvement Agreement from Skycrest Partners LP to D.R. Horton Bay, Inc. Staff report, please. Thank you and good evening, Honorable Mayor and City Council. Uh, this is an area that the Council know well, knows well. The Skycrest Center stood on the corner of Glenview Drive and San Bruno Avenue since the 1950s. However, after years of decline, uh, several years ago, uh, both the property owner of the entire complex as well as the, the developer, Skycrest Partners, uh, approached the city requesting to demolish a majority of the center as well as build 24 homes on the southern end of the site and expand and remodel the Lunardi site. Um, in 2005, 2006, uh, the developer did, uh, uh, developer of the 24 homes did receive several entitlements. These included uh, rezoning the site so it could be a medium density development, um, included a plan development permit, as well as a development agreement, an affordable housing agreement, and an improvement agreement. Since that time, 12 of these 24 homes have been developed. They all are all are occupied at this point. All of the public improvements associated with this development have been installed and were accepted by the city in 2008. And Lunardi's was successfully remodeled, uh, facade improvement, as well as an expansion and back, uh, adding about 50% onto their store. So tonight, there is basically a twofold request. Uh, and one important thing is that the developer chose not to proceed with the final uh, phase of the development, the final 12 homes, because of the decline in the housing market that started to occur in 2007. Tonight, uh, the developer's request is twofold. It's number one for the city to council to adopt an ordinance that conditionally terminates the development agreement, and I'll get more into the details of that, as well as the second request is to assign a, an affordable housing agreement as well as the improvement agreement to the new developer that's interested in the site, which is D.R. Horton Bay. What a development agreement is, a development agreement isn't involved in every single development. Um, we had one for the crossing, we had one for this development. And what it does, it has specific things outside the development entitlements to that both the city must do and the developer must do. In this case, Skycrest Partners, uh, the major things that they had to do they had to provide $200,000 in landscape funding for the medians. Uh, that has been done. That money has been paid and the medians has been, have been installed. They also had to provide a loan to Lunardi's in the amount of $250,000. This loan was given to the city and then would be given to Lunardi's. That loan was given, however, Lunardi's was able to secure private financing and they never did uh, take us up on the offer for the loan. So that loan was given back to the developer earlier this year. Um, there was also an affordable housing agreement for the developer to, instead of providing housing on site, uh, affordable housing on site, they were required to pay about $43,000 per unit. And for the, first 12, uh, for the first 12 homes, that amount has been paid. And of course, uh, the one thing that still hasn't been, that hasn't been accomplished with the development agreement is the payment of all fees. Um, at the, and these are always due at the time of building permit issuance. So in this case, there's, uh, of course, the building permit fees, there's the affordable housing fees, and there's also the school fees that go directly uh, to the school district. So um, in this case, what the developer is asking for is a conditional termination. And what this conditional termination would do is the development would, would go away and no longer be recorded against these parcels once the developer pays all these fees. However, even when this development agreement goes away. There are parts of the development agreement that live on, and they're all noted in your, in your staff report, but I'll go through them quickly. Uh, there's first is that there's a remedies of breach section, there's cooperation in the event of a third party ta challenge, and there's an indemnification and joint liability clause. I'll let Mark explain, the city attorney explain those if you have any specific questions on those, but those are important aspects and those will live on and protect the, protect the city in the long run. Uh, regarding the affordable housing agreement, um, as I stated, the developer has already paid $43,000 per home, and they would be still required to pay 43, the new developer would be required to pay the same $43,000 per home, and the city takes in that amount before the building permit is issued. And same with the improvement agreement. Although all the improvements have been made, all the sidewalks, all the drains and everything 
has been installed and accepted by the city. But we were concerned about that is if there was any damage to those sidewalks, any damage to the streets during the second phase of construction. We still wanted to have that improvement agreement. So the improvement agreement would live on until all those 12 homes are constructed and we could sign off that the sidewalks and streets are still in uh, good condition. In terms of what the final result would be, this development would be the same development that was approved by the Planning Commission, that was approved by the City Council. Um, there would be no changes. Our development and titles live on. All the conditions of approvals live on, so that would be untouched. In fact, I've, I've talked to the developer who is here tonight and can speak to this further, but they also have a vested interest to make sure that this is the same high-quality development because they actually still own several of the homes in the initial phase that they're renting out. So they actually have something within the clause and in the, in the sales that the same high-quality standards be met that were met in the first phase. Um, Any time we assign an affordable housing agreement or an improvement agreement or any agreement that the city is in with the developer to a new developer, we want to make sure that developer can meet all the requirements of those agreements. Um, city staff has looking over, looked over D.R. Horton. They're a nationally recognized, I think the number one builder uh, in the United States right now. They have three decades worth of experience, so we're confident that they can meet the provisions within the agreement. And just on an overall note, and I, I noted this to the Planning Commission itself, um, it is good to see that even though some of these smaller developers still can't move forward with some of these developments, that these large developers are taking interest in San Bruno and think that this is a good place to do business. We had Lennar recently break ground on the Cedar Mills project, and now we have D.R. Horton uh, interested in breaking ground in this project. And if all goes well, they would be interested in breaking ground next year. So I could take any questions at this time. Yeah. Any questions of Aaron at this time? Aaron, are they going to follow the same architectural style that the other homes have, or are they going to do something radically different, or how's it going to work? It'll be the exact same. The, the same entitlements live on, so the same architectural review permit, the same facades, down to even the same material and landscaping plan uh, okay. will have to be followed. Okay, great. Thank you. Good. Anything else? All right, this time we'll open the public hearing. Notices have been published, <coughs> posted, and mailed. Would anyone like to talk to us regarding this item? Is this on? My name is Bruce Russell. Um, I'm the owner of uh, uh, Skycrest Partners, one of the owners. We were the original developer. Uh, we've been here quite a while. Uh, we started this project, I think, in about 2002. Um, we have kind of mixed feelings. We would have liked to have finished it. But given the economic downturn in the real estate market, we're a relatively small developer, a small builder. And some of these larger builders like D.R. Horton and Lennar, they're much more capable at this point of going forward when it would still take us another year or two to wait for the economy to recover. So uh, they approached us. Uh, we've talked to them. We have, I think, complied with everything we've ever promised that we would do. Uh, we've done all the things Eric, uh, Aaron has mentioned. And one of the things that's very important for us, not only because we still own four units, but because we take a lot of pride in the projects we work on, is that this project's finished exactly the way it was approved. And in addition to the city having all the conditions of approval still applying, we have insisted that uh, D.R. Horton, if they had purchased the property, uh, record covenants against it that require the same exterior finishes, the same architecture, the same landscaping, uh, basically all the same materials. They might change the interiors of the house, but they're not going to change the outside of the house from our standpoint, and I hope the city views it the same way. Because it's very important that there be continuity in the development and be finished like it was started. Um, uh, although we have mixed feelings, I think it's kind of a win-win for everybody. Um, um, obviously, San Bruno has a need for single-family housing. We're not in a position, given the economic situation, to probably build the next 12 houses for, two, for a year or two more. And these folks are. Uh, that way they can finish off the development and the project will be done. So unless you have any questions, I don't have Good. anything else. Any questions uh, for Mr. Okay. Russell? I don't have a question, if I could. I uh, just wanted to say, yeah, it's mixed feelings because you've, you're almost like one of the pioneers of uh, San Bruno redevelopment. And uh, to see that uh, a portion of our redevelopment area uh, was done by the book. I mean, Lenardi's was improved. and. Uh, you know, we changed uh, we changed use of that site, and you came in, and uh, things aren't easy in San Bruno because we get hit with a recession right when right when we're rolling. So, uh, thank you 
and uh, wish you well. And I know you know that project will will be completed and the way you intended it. So. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to you know someday come back and do something else in San Bernardino. It's been a great city to work in. The staff's been phenomenal. All of you have been phenomenal. And uh, it's been a tough economy though. And so this is a way for us to move on and for that project to get finished. Through the chair. <clears throat> on the same note, Ms. Russell, uh, reading the staff report and listening, uh, it seems what you uh, intended came in, uh, you've taken care of, you've met your obligations, uh, and we appreciate that. And uh, my concern, which uh, Aaron already alluded to, was just the quality, that the assurance that the second phase and the same type of quality that we had on the first phase continues on with the same footprint and facade. I think that's important so we add to the integrity of what's already began and we conclude on that same note. But also, uh, I can understand your sentiment and your feelings, but thank you for making the obligations and commitments that you agreed to to, to the city and to the residents uh, so far. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. It's important to us, and I know it's important to the city. Good. Anything else? Okay. This is a public hearing. Would anyone else like to speak to us regarding this item? should know that if we uh, close the public hearing, you'll be precluded from talking about this item again. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Motion second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Action on behalf of uh, Council. Good Chair, I'd like to make a motion to waive the reading. Second. Motion second to waive the reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I can uh, introduce the ordinance. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Vice Mayor Salazar. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Thank you very much for once again, Bruce. Thank you. You also have a resolution. Oh, we have a resolution too. Okay. Yes. I'll, in I'll introduce a resolution for adoption. Council Member Ibera. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Vice Mayor Salazar. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Okay. 